What would be uh, one of the most important factors to consider about crop residue in today's farming environment? I think what we see are two things going on. With trend line yields continuing to march ever higher and populations increasing in many crops such as corn, it creates both operational challenges with today's equipment, how it should be designed, as well as some agronomic questions as rotations change to accommodate ethanol production, other factors, uh, how we manage nitrogen in those environments, what effects there are on soil organic matter, and if we do believe that ethanol production might also in involve cellulosic ethanol production, what are the questions that might be involved? Should we be taking residue from the field and bringing it back in, in some other form? Uh, are there implications for soil organic matter long term? Uh, what do those things look like? So at first we might think of those operational questions, but I do believe it's also agronomic. We want to make sure we continue to strive for options to, to give you as producers to make those adjustments um, as, as we continue to go through the field, um, as those changes occur. Uh, we've got to be able to spread it out to that 45 for those, for those draper heads, um, whether we're in corn, being able to control it uh, uh, as well to, again, to give that even even spread width, spread distance, as well as that mat. So again, whether Rob comes back with uh, some tillage tools or, or uh, uh, Dale is direct seeding, uh, again, we want to make sure that we've got a uniformity there from uh, and what the combines can do from a harvest standpoint. There are several tillage strategies uh, to, to deal with residue problems and issues. As we've seen in the last few years, high speed, low draft, all rotary, vertical tillage, as it were, uh, has uh, emerged uh, very strongly in the marketplace and one of the strategies or benefits from vertical tillage is new ways to size and mix residue both in the fall and in the spring we were surprised at, at how popular these machines became behind the combine post harvest but residue decomposition is largely biological and not necessarily just mechanical so taking advantage of fall heat units that might still be available after harvest can begin to accelerate the decomposition of those residues. Dale, Rob just mentioned uh, seed bed, seed bed preparation. Well, that's, that's an important area. And uh, I get out in the field a lot in the spring and uh, looking at seed beds, uh, whether it's uh, rice uh, down in the Delta or uh, canola up north. And quite often, uh, some of the uh, fields we get into, we'll see some uneven emergence. And when you start to investigate those areas a little bit, you'll see that, as Nate mentioned, some of the things that happen in the fall are impacting our, our seed and seed emergence and stand establishment. You'll see uh, perhaps a little bit delayed emergence. Uh, you'll find a, a mat of fines in some strips across the field where the crop is coming a little bit later. A couple degrees uh, lower temperature impacts that seed emergence, and you, you can kind of see that throughout the season out there. And ultimately, it can have an impact on your final yield. Producers continue to increase populations, and if the weather cooperates, we're going to see a lot more residue challenges in the future. And as producers consider this residue mass uh, that's on the soil surface, it's also a very valuable nutrient pool. A typical ton of corn stalks, for example, would have 25 to 30 pounds of, of uh, potassium available per acre and about six pounds of phosphorus. So on a typical 200 bushel corn crop, you might see 150 to 175 pounds of available potassium and 30 pounds of phosphorus. It's a huge nutrient pool to consider cycling back to feed the subsequent crop rather than rely solely on fertilizer. Rob makes a good point. Organic matter is, uh, I don't know a field out here unless the guy's farming a peat bog that couldn't stand some more organic matter in that top layer to help uh, grab on some more moisture and hold it uh, for that next year's crop. Exactly. And for those of you uh, that have read any of the farm magazines, any publications in the last six months, you're seeing more and more interest in cover crops and adding residue back. I just want to challenge everybody to open your eyes and your mind to different practices and the things that are going to be coming down the road here. Uh, uh, crop rotation, uh, cover crops, for example, that sounds like something from the past but a lot of these good ideas come full circle. So be open to those types of ideas. Take a look at it on your farms. Talk with your neighbors that are doing it. You'll be surprised at how many people are starting to implement these practices on their farms because they're thinking about future generations and how the impact or what we do with our soils today are gonna impact what our children and grandchildren are gonna be farming 
uh, in the future here and providing the food for the future populations we have.